Did you kill me? You no. killed me! No, did I? Yeah. <laughs> you weren't blue. The Cycle Frontier is a free-to-play reboot of, well, The Cycle, the title created by Jaeger and launched as an Epic Store exclusive a few years ago. And whether it was the more casual nature of the game or the Epic Store exclusivity, The Cycle, the old one, never really caught on in a meaningful way and was pulled from the store and taken back to the drawing board. And draw they did, heavily from Tarkov. I think we are nearing the point where Tarkov-like should just be a genre, and this is probably full release entry number one. So The Cycle Frontier is back, this time on Steam, still free to play, but a more hardcore experience. There is no escaping the Tarkov comparison. The Cycle has a grid-based inventory system, except this one uses weight rather than slots and item orientation. There's three AI factions that offer quests in exchange for XP, gear, and loyalty. The AI enemies are brutal and unforgiving, and if we are honest, probably a bit too bullet spongy. But these comparisons assume you've played Tarkov. If you haven't, that's okay your mental health is important. So the rules are simple. Drop into the colorful landscape of Pandora. Oh, sorry, Fortuna 3. Good name for a planet, don't need to workshop that. You can use your mineral scanner to find minerals, harvest them with a pickaxe, blow off some steam by killing anything that approaches you, pick up any valuables along the way, and head to extraction. It is an extraction shooter through and through, so no real twists here. Given that it is a shooter, you are probably curious about the gunplay and, well, it's hardcore, which means largely the beginning weapons kind of suck. There are weapon attachments that can improve the handling and accuracy, but if you're just starting out, you're gonna have to wade through the mud of bland colors, low damage bullets, and high recoil. Also, with a map so large and AI enemies so numerous, traversing and shooting are probably the most common thing you'll do aside from looting, which makes it unfortunate that traversal is a near constant disappointment of vaults that look like they should work but don't. It's not a desync issue as much as it's just the environment and your movement abilities are hard to read. And fall damage is insane probably for balancing reasons, but this feels like an overstep. Although, judging by how short our character models are compared to the furniture, maybe gravity is just really strong on Fortuna. Another gripe I have is that the AI enemies are bullet sponges and the basic weapons suck, which means oftentimes I chose to just run past enemies rather than waste my precious ammo, time, and anonymity. I understand that the monster body parts fetch a pretty penny, but this feels like a weird result of design choices rather than intended player behavior. Don't get me wrong, combat can still be fun, whether you are up close and personal with an assault rifle or keeping your distance with a sniper, landing shots and getting kills is rewarding. But from my talks with friends, you either get it or you don't. Oh, it's th Fuck this game, man! The movement sucks, the guns suck, I can't hit anything! Keep in mind, this is a free-to-play game. That means if you go into it and have fun, congratulations, you have enjoyed yourself rent-free. However, it also means you will, by design, be blatantly aware of the monetization systems. Like your favorite amusement park, the gift shop is conveniently right near the exit. There is a premium currency which can get you cosmetic skins and certain bonuses, the most egregious of which is the crafting time. The second I saw that my green backpack takes 15 real world minutes to create, this game lost a bit of my favor. To be fair, you can improve your crafting time by upgrading your living quarters, but it seems the only way to skip it entirely is to pay money. Which is fine, many people worked very hard on this game, twice, so they deserve to be paid, but the most fervent cycle players will need to keep Jaeger accountable here. I am hopeful the unreleased battle pass will be more worthwhile than paying a company to not wait in their hub world or to skip the system to boost my retention. My overall impressions of the cycle frontier is there is potential for fun, though it won't appeal to everyone, not that they are trying to. Despite its cartoony graphics and stylized cosmetics, which I think will already put off many fans of the genre, this is not a casual approach to extraction shooters. 
I enjoy that the quests direct your approach to each mission and give you objectives, and the PvP combat can reward thinking tactically, but I can't help feeling that there is a disconnect somewhere between the visual style of the game and the extent of the hardcore mechanics, but that might just be a consequence of its revamped development. So is it worth downloading, doing the tutorial, and grinding through some growing pains? Yeah, I would say so given its friendly, free price tag, but how Jaeger continues to refine the experience will determine its overall success. It's a game I really want to enjoy, and hopefully with enough player feedback going into improvements, this won't be just another failed launch in the cycle. Yep. Oh shit! Did you just kill me? Okay, I killed one of theirs. Are you dead? I'm dead? Well, shit. There's so much gear here. Did you kill me? You no. killed me! No, did I? Yeah. <laughs> you weren't blue. Wait, 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 wait. Were you the one on the ramp? Yes! Okay, okay, that Hunter. wasn't me. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. That I was didn't, you? Okay, no, okay, I okay, didn't okay. kill you. 